How do you use two logic gates to calculate the sum of two numbers? So we have come to the foundation of the ALU, which is the arithmetic logic unit. And the ALU is a major piece of component inside the CPU. And there are various inputs. You've got the data inputs. In this case, the ALU is a 16-bit uh, arithmetic logical unit. And so you've got the two numbers coming in. You've got the 16-bit digit X and the Y coming in as data. But the ALU also rece receives instructions. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six instruction sets, which allows us to combine various um, Boolean operations um, in order to operate on the X and the Y values, giving an output. And essentially, the ZR and NG is a comparison operator, and it's used for jumping to locations later. Most of the operations performed by digital computers can be reduced to elementary additions of binary numbers, which is the X and the Y coming in, and with instruction set operating on the two values here. And the constructive understanding of binary addition holds the key to the implementation of numerous computer operations that depend on it. So let's come back to binary numbers. Binary numbers are founded on the base 2 system. Shown here is a 5-digit binary number inside parentheses showing that this is a base 2. And how this is calculated or converted into a decimal number is that you, with the equivalent 10011, you multiply by the uh, base to the power of, for example, 4 here, and you essentially sum them up. So these two are off, so we're not calculating this, So it, because it provides 0 as a result. And the addition of these numbers together gives us an equivalent of a 19th in a decimal format, and this is the 19 in a binary format. So in general, let the following be a string of digits from the most from the least significant bit all the way to the most significant bit. And the value of x in base b denoted xp is defined as follows. Um, with a summation notation here, and it's the addition of x i times b to the power of i. So as this increment, that the base increments. Now, if a computer receives, for example, the equivalent of number here, if we have an 8-bit system, how do we store this inside an 8-bit system? So this is what gets stored in the register in an 8-bit system. We've got an 8-bit right? Binary digit. And this is what gets stored. But if this is inside a 16-bit or 32-bit, for example, this is what gets stored. So the 19 is in the least significant bit, the first five. Now let's look at binary addition. So a pair of numbers can be added digit by digit from the right, which is the least significant bit here, all the way to the left, the most significant bit. Right, so this is a significant bit, the LSB, and that's the MSB. So if we have the decimal equivalent of 91 plus 50, we get 141. And this is 91 as a binary equivalent of to the decimal. This is 50 as a binary equivalent to the 50 uh, to the decimal. And let's look at how this is added. So we have um, binary addition works this way. If you see a 1 and 0, you, carry, you bring this down as a 1. But the moment you see a 1 and a 1, you get a 0 and you carry the 1 over, which is at the top uh, row here. And 1, 0, 0 is 1. Okay? And that gives you another 1 here. Now, because this is 1 and 1, you get zero here and you carry one over one and one you get a zero get carry one over and this also can get carried over and there's no ones here so this falls down to this column so in this particular uh, binary addition there's no overflow all right when there's no overflow uh, nothing gets carried over and that's zero so we look at another example 
So we have 219 plus 178, which gives us an equivalent of 397. And the binary equivalent is as such, so we can go through again. So this is 1, this gives us a 0 with a 1 carryover. It gives us a 1 and a 1, and over here we, we have 1 carryover. And that gives us 0, this gives us 0 with a 1 carryover. And this is 1, 1, 1, 1, but because of the 3, uh, um, switched on digits, we get one carry over and we have a carry and this is an overflow. So this diagram shows you the basics of how we can add binary uh, digits together. Now the question is, which kind of logic gates would you use to implement binary addition? Knowing the behavior, okay? So if it's one and zero, you get a one. If it's a one and one, you get a zero here with a carry over. So this question of which kind of logic gates is important because then we can implement using the six sets of elementary logic gates and using this set of elementary logic gates to construct a binary addition composite gate. So we come to our collection of elementary logic gates and I want to show you how we can locate the patterns that we have here and map it to one of the gates that we have here. So if it's uh, 1 and 0, we get a 1. In any case, if we have a 1 and 0, we have a, we have a 1. So whether the 1 is here or here, we get a 1. Right? But 1, 1 provides us with 0. Okay? So this cannot be the end gate because 1, 1 provides us with a 1. Okay, so a column here, the two inputs A and B, okay, two inputs A and B, and the output is not matching this, and neither does it match this particular uh, uh, gate, the OR gate. So if you look around, this addition, this summation is equivalent in the behavior to this truth table, is the XOR case. Right, so if it's zero zero, we get a zero. Okay, uh, we can't see the case here. Um, if it's one and one, we also get a zero because then we need to carry over one. Okay, so one and one gives us a zero, which carries over one. So we can use this as the first set of the logic gates, and the second set of logic gate we can use another one. Okay, which provides us with one one with a carry over. So we need two sets of logic gates to construct uh, an adder. Here we see there are two outputs. We have the results of the sum here. We also have the carry here. Okay, looking at the sum and the carry, we can use the XOR gates for the sum, right? Where A input and B input goes in, okay? We can also use the N gates for the carry. So two gates to construct a one bit adder. So A comes in, B comes in, and we have the behavior giving us the sum. We have A also coming into the A, A input of the AND gate, B coming into the B input of the AND gate, and the output is the carry. So two of these gates can be used as a one bit adder. It's very clear, okay? That's the behavior for the sum, and that's the behavior and gate for the carry. So we've solved our problem. The most basic adder is the half adder, which has only one bit. So the least significant bit in the addition is called the sum, and the most significant bit is the carry. So we have a truth table for our half adder, and why the half adder? We'll have a look later, but we actually have a full adder, and the half adder and the full adder are both needed. So for the sum, we have the behavior from the XOR gates, right? And the carry, we have an, a behavior. So a half adder diagram is as such, we have A and B coming in, and inside you've got a XOR gate and an N gate, and both the A and B goes into each of these gates. And from the XOR gate is the sum as an output. 
from the end gate is the carry as the output. So if you look at each column separately, right, you see such a pattern. So how would you implement the half adder in the HDL? So this is the code for the HDL. And later I'll produce videos that actually maps code with the uh, diagram. So with two inputs A and B, we have an output, two outputs, one is a sum, one is a carry, and we have the parts. So we need an XOR gate with both the A coming in to, and B coming in as input. We have this as, as an out for the sum. We have an end gate with both A and B and the carry as, as the out. So this is the complete implementation in the hardware simulator for the half adder. So computes the sum. So computes the sum, the least significant bit of A plus B plus C. We have the carry, the most significant bit of A plus B plus C. Okay, and this is the complete table. For a full adder, our table, uh, truth table is this. When it's 1, 1, we have a carry. When there's only a 1, there's no carry. When there's a 2, there's a carry. Okay, when there's a 3, there's a carry and a sum. So this is a complete behavior. If you study this, you get the idea. Full adder has a diagram with an additional C coming in. So if you add more than one bit, for example, two bits, in the second bit, in the most significant bit, you need a C coming in just in case A and B produces this state, right? Or a carry state, for example. So the carry bit, where does it go? Okay, the carry bit goes here, okay? So if we have a one, zero, we bring this one down because of the XOR. If you have a 1 and a 1, the 2 are added, right? And that brings a carry. And we have a 0 here because of the XOR gate. Okay, So this is the XOR gate and this is the end gate. This is a carry from the previous adder. So a full adder is made up of two half adders and this is the implementation. Okay, we have two half adders added together and we finally have an XOR to decide the carry. Okay, so this is the uh, composite gate. You know, of course, in the pre two previous slides, we've seen the implementation in code and in diagram of the half adder. And you can see that this particular bit is carried from the previous bit. Okay, the least significant bit. And it goes to the second half adder, which decides whether the XOR is a carry or not. And the sum goes out as the sum. Looking at the half adder again, okay, so the carry goes out from the half adder, okay, here, and the carry from the previous bit, the least significant bit, comes in here into the second adder and goes out. Right? So this diagram requires you to study in order to understand how the flow of data goes through the composite gates. So note that we have so far progressively built all components on top of each other. So we now need to build a 16-bit adder from base components. So we've got our you know, NAND gates leading up to our basic logic gates. You know, our basic logic gates is used um, to, to construct a half adder with the sum and the XOR gate, the N and the XOR. And also, we've added an extra XOR gate to complement two half adders to make a full adder. So a 16-bit adder is with a diagram here. We've got 16-bit of input from A, another 16-bit of input from B, and we have an output of 16-bit. Now, how would you build a 16-bit adder from the previous components? So we look at this particular column, the least significant bit. Now, there's no carry needed in here. Am I right? So since there's no carry, all we need to construct as the first bit, the least significant bit, is to use the half adder because the half adder does not have three inputs. The half adder has only two inputs, A and B. But from then on, from the 
second least significant bit onwards all the way up to the most significant bit, we have three inputs. So we have to put the A, the B, and this is a carry from the half adder. So from looking at this 16-bit adder, you start to realize that this is why we need a half adder and a full adder. So let me repeat this again. We've got the half adder here because it doesn't require a, a carry, a C input. But from the second significant bit onwards, we require three inputs, the A, B, and the C carried from the half adder. So the first carry is not needed here. This is made clear. And now we have a full picture. A 16-bit adder is made up of 15 full adders right here and one half adder in the LSB. So this is the 16-bit adder in the hardware simulator HDL code. As you can see, we have a half adder as, a, as in the LSB with no C as an input. And we have a carry up, we have a carry here, which goes up to the C of the carry, carry zero, carry zero. Okay, C of the carry in the second LSB inside into the full adder. So A, B, C here, where there's only two inputs here, A and B. So this brings us to the end of the tutorial, and I hope you've enjoyed this and learned something from it. In this video, I showed you how we can use the half adder and the full adder to, in order to construct the 16-bit adder. And the half adder is constructed from the XOR gate and the AND gate, and the full adder is with an additional XOR gate. I've always believed that using diagram is a much better way of teaching computer fundamentals than using uh, just code alone. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and comment on the video. Once again, thanks for watching.